Hi folks, so I've just been, um, in this video series I'm talking about some of the ways that you can authenticate uh, over a network and have a, like a, a, a computer that authenticates against a separate system that manages usernames and passwords and account information. So um, I'm going to talk about Kerberos now um, and for the purpose of this video series, I'm going to keep this quite brief, uh, but give you an idea about what Kerberos does and how it kind of fits into the broader uh, like authentication, network authentication kind of landscape. So Kerberos is a network authentication protocol uh, and it uses a trusted third party to, en to enable clients and servers to verify each other's identity without sending passwords to each other directly. So you um, have a client system and you've got a server they're trying to log into, Kerberos acts as a third party, a trusted third party that they both communicate with and they both, both of these people, both of these servers have to trust Kerberos, the Kerberos server, to provide the authentication to um, that they are, each are who they say they are. So it allows us to do that in a secure way over the network without giving away any passwords if anyone's listening. Um, and it basically, Kerberos has a key distribution center um, which basically gives an authenticated client a, a, limit, a time limited access to the server by basically issuing a ticket to say here's a token that says that you're allowed to access the server. Um, and so those tickets give the client permission to access the server and if the server trusts Kerberos um, then it will um, basically accept that certificate from the client um, and uh, go from there. So the protocol that Kerberos is based on is the um, Needham Schroeder protocol um, and it's a key establishment protocol it uses an authentication server as an intermediary so the clients and server both share their private keys with the authentication server. Um, there are like nonces, which are a random, like a random one, one use um, value that it get used to try and defend against replay attacks. So someone listening on the network, they can't see passes, but they also can't just replay um, packets. Um, the the authentication server basically issues a session key to the client and to the server. And the authentication server tr has to be trusted to authenticate the client. Um, and so the client and the server both have to trust the um, server. Uh, and that establishes a session key for the authentication and to continue secure communications going forwards. So there are some weaknesses in the um, Needham Schroeder protocol that Kerberos fixes. So basically it does things like adding timestamps so that you can't um, there are still some replay attacks that were possible on the original protocol, so Kerberos adds a bit to that and fixes some problems, but that's what it's based on. So um, Kerberos um, do, you know, does this over a network and some comparison to, you know, we did a, a separate video and I was talking about LDAP security and how you can use LDAP to essentially do the same thing. Uh, the difference is with LDAP, you, um, you, you're sending the, the password just over the network and you have to use extra layers of security like using t uh, TLS security to try and secure that communications, whereas Kerberos is designed as a protocol that can happen over the network so that even if you're listening, you can see all of the traffic that's flowing between the systems uh, and it's kept secure um, through the protocol itself rather as like a separate layer that's added on top. Um, so that's just a very brief um, overview. Um, I'm going to um, next talk about uh, in a separate video about um, Active Directory, which actually uses Kerberos for the authentication part of what Active Directory does. So Active Directory in Windows does a whole bunch of things um, for managing users and, and accounts and all, and all sorts. Um, and Kerberos is one part of how Active Directory works.